when you think of engineering marvels, you'd probably picture massive bridges or towering skyscrapers. But what if I told you about a project so ambitious it aimed to redraw the very map of nature? A plan to take an entire river, divert its flow, and breathe life into a land that for centuries was known only as the Sea of Death, Zids. The story of how China redirected one of its most vital arteries into a barren desert, and the results. Well, they shocked the world. For thousands of years, the Yellow River was the cradle of Chinese civilization. Its waters built cities, fed empires, and, in its fury, destroyed them. But by the late 20th century, the Mother River was dying. Decades of industrialization and diversion had taken their toll. In 1997, the unthinkable happened. For 226 days, the Yellow River dried up completely before it could reach the sea. The cradle of civilization had become a corridor of dust. Faced with this catastrophe, the government made a radical decision. If the river could no longer reach the sea, it would reach the desert. Their target, the Kubuki Desert in Inner Mongolia. A vast 18,000 square kilometer expanse of shifting sand dunes. If the every spring, fierce windstorms from Kabuki would blanket Beijing in a thick yellow haze. Entire villages vanished as the desert relentlessly swallowed 100 meters of grassland each year. It was a creeping, unstoppable threat. So, in 2005, a project of almost unimaginable scale began. Engineers, ecologists, and thousands of local herders set out to build a network of canals, tunnels, and pumping stations. Daigle. To pull water from the ailing Yellow River and pump it hundreds of kilometers north, straight into the heart of the desert. The initiative was called the Green Barrier Project, but too many, it sounded like pure fantasy. The early days were a brutal lesson in humility. The desert was a place of extremes, swinging from 50 degrees Celsius in summer to minus 30 in winter. Water evaporated almost instantly. The first canals collapsed under the shifting sands, and newly planted saplings withered and died within days. It seemed the critics were right. The desert was simply too powerful. But instead of admitting defeat, the teams adapted. They began to work with the desert, not against it. They developed a new technique, lining the canals with a mixture of clay and fine gravel to trap water underground, slashing evaporation by a staggering 70%. Then came the real game changer. They started cultivating biological crusts, a living skin of moss, lichen, and bacteria that sealed the soil, locking in precious moisture. It was genius, using nature's own technology to heal itself, Ray. By 2010, they had stabilized over a thousand square kilometers of sand dunes. Local people, who had once fled the desert, returned to join the fight. They planted millions of drought-resistant trees, saxol, poplar, and licorice whose deep roots acted like living pumps. Drawing the underground water to the surface and creating shade. And then, something incredible started to happen. On satellite images. Patches of green began to appear. The desert's relentless advance slowed, then stopped. And then, for the first time in recorded history, it began to retreat. The water from the Yellow River didn't just dampen the sand. It resurrected an entire ecosystem. Within five years, over 100 species of plants reappeared. They were soon followed by birds, insects, and even foxes. The local temperature dropped by two degrees. And the notorious dust storms that plagued Beijing decreased by 90%. But this triumph came with a heavy cost. Diverting billions of tons of water from an already stressed river had consequences. Provinces downstream cried foul, accusing the project of stealing their water supply. Nay, near the river's delta, fishermen saw salinity rise as less fresh water reached the sea. Environmentalists warned that healing one ecosystem might be creating a new crisis somewhere else. The project was at a crossroads. The solution, once again, 
came from brilliant innovation. Instead of relying solely on fresh river water, engineers created a closed-loop system. They began cycling, treated wastewater from nearby cities through a series of constructed wetlands at the desert's edge. These artificial marshes, filled with reeds and lotus flowers, used microbes and natural filtration to purify the water. It was the perfect blend of human design and natural processes, creating a self-sustaining cycle. By 2015, the transformation was due. The sea of death was turning into a sea of life. Barren dunes were now green pastures. Families who had left decades ago returned, farming, licorice and other medicinal plants in the newly fertile soil. Wind turbines and solar panels sprouted across the landscape, turning the desert's relentless sun and wind into clean energy. Spore. Over 100,000 people found new jobs in ecotourism and sustainable agriculture. The region's economy grew tenfold. But perhaps the most profound change was psychological. For generations, humanity has believed that deserts only expand. Kubuki proved that with a deep understanding of nature, we can reverse the process. The United Nations hailed the project as a global model for desert control. Delegations from Africa, the Middle East, and South America flocked to learn its secrets. Projects like Egypt's Great Green Wall and Saudi Arabia's Neom Oasis Plan have drawn direct inspiration from this Chinese experiment. Of course, the story isn't over. The balance is fragile. Re. Maintaining this green oasis requires constant management. Satellite data shows that without this human intervention, the sands could creep back. It's a living relationship, not a one-time fix. Still, the results are undeniable. Over 6,000 square kilometers of desert reclaimed. Millions of tons of carbon emissions reduced. And a region once defined by despair is now a beacon of hope. The Kubuki project is both a triumph and a warning. A triumph of what we can achieve when we collaborate with nature instead of trying to conquer it. And a warning that every resource we borrow comes with a profound responsibility. As our world gets hotter and drier, the lessons learned in this remote desert offer a path forward. If we can bring a dead desert back to life, what else is possible? Thanks for watching. If you found this story as inspiring as I did, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more stories about the incredible ways we are shaping our world. See you next time.